Thank you so much. Uh, great pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, John Martone, who's a, a treasure, clearly, to this organization and school and uh, wonderful conversation we've been having. And thank you all for coming out tonight. So I'm going to do a range of things. And if I can figure out the, the uh, computer here, I'll play a little bit of music towards the end, which is um, uh, tracks from a current CD with my son Ambrose Bai's compositions. And uh, he's worked a lot with my poetry and now with the poetry of others. So I'm sorry he can't be here live in person, but it's the next best thing. OK, thank you again. I'm going to start with a piece called Neurolinguistically, This is the Writing Dance. This is the writing dance, or a plumed helmet, which itself resembles a heart in the shape of Africa. Continents, continents. The challenge is to question the warrior. Get inside his, her armor. Get inside the land which has no boundary. We could talk about China now, its economics, its technocrats, its ecological suffering, the backdoor deals. And we could be happily Canadian, but could we really? We could talk about Liberia, Darfur, Zimbabwe, suffering everywhere, and Congo, and our own backyard, safe, starlit. Stomp on it right now, out on that turf. This is the obsequious politician flattering you. You never believe him, never. The eminence of philosophy, so crenellated, so terraced, pronouncing the name of your dance. Down with the tyrant. This is the gesture and the name. Down with the tyrant. Down with his exaggerated thunder. You want to talk psychosis? Down with the tyrant. Daggers, hysterical Puritans, starved animals. You want to. You want to. You want to talk. You want to write. This is the writing dance written for all to see. The whole picture of the decimated site. The picture of charnel ground. And the jackals came. And the jackals came. Sift. Sift through the body parts. Sift. Sift. See the back of his head. Would a gesture knock him off? Or is he too steely-eyed? Eyes look through the head, inside there, the little screen. The trick is to dance upon it. The dance I was doing is the written dance. To be a barker, to be a noisemaker, be a saint. Tools, linen, weapons, wires, women creating sainthood. Place hands together and bow. This was the written dance, eyes looking back on themselves before growing cold. Check out the moon. Check out all the characters. The philosopher, for example, her window of the room, the guy ready to blast his M16, the naturalist with steely gaze, dark streets out there below the moon. Is that what I see? Is it written? No, this is the smitten dance, flying over the occupied territories. Don't talk to me about transgression anymore. This is the trespass dance. This is the way I get down for it. It's my power structure to strangle Dick Cheney, strangle Bernanke, strangle Paulson, strangle Newt Gingrich. Avanti, no, pundit Gringrich, euphemisms. And if I were a scientist, I would scream in my scientist voice, neurons, neurons. I would say it again and again, the way the neurons like to be commended and commented upon. Dear neurons, you can be so kind. I would say, elephants move like this neurolinguistically. And snakes move like that. And hyenas are shrieking at the body politic. And if I were a Sufi, I might spit out of control. This is not the terra firma dance. This is not the map of the capital materialist junta dance. This is the writing dance. Ida Lupino liked it. 
Many actresses from the former eras wanted the scripts to go on and on. They were never confused about their priorities. They had their stage directions, their moves, their maps. They had their songs, their gestures, their postures. And they performed for a silver screen. They had their desires. And their sky was covered with a thin layer of clouds. Everything was quiet and still when they came on the set. It was like a scene of tranquil poetry. It was a scene you had to have been there for as it got written. And the one who emerged, who lingered, was the one you pointed to. Was, was, was she, she who had been stalling with feet like the feet of many different animals and with eyes in all the pores of their pelts and voices sounding as only she could as them and mapping and changing the way the writing would go if it were a dance. You might wonder. Okay. Oh. When you go into that strangling part, you can, you know, fill in the blank. <laughs> So next I'd like to, this is a piece um, kind of homage to John Cage and um, it's called Pieces of an Hour and were the whole thing to be performed properly it would take about an hour with a lot of gap and uh, improvisation. Um, I've, I've performed it with some of Cage's music and also with um, Cage aficionados and also bring, bring in some of his texts but I'll do a little just a little bit of it. So pieces of an hour. <clears throat> and it's in this form of um, Sprechstimme. Maybe some of you know that word, sort of spoke sung, because I can't really quite sing, so. There's a little intro here uh, being called to on for a performance, the poet needs summoning from mental torpor and welcomes a structure which she creates with dogged attention. She's also given her students the same assignment to write every day within the same hour on the same spot. One woman never strays from her laundry closet. John Cage is quintessential artist of the 20th century, likely the most innovative. His passivity, if you could call it that, both gentle and active. His work is fierce. She pays homage in a kind of twilight meditation. Whatever sounds come out of her composed in this chance piece to accompany his music and so on. So, Dear John Cage, what? Time me time, individual who is effective, effective, is pattern in a great part persist. Ist los, sacred gesture, utilize it. What in counting? Four minutes, 33 seconds, patrician etiquette of their family, daily like is built, pieces of an hour. One, the cause, two, the ceremony, minute flicker, three, you see the inside of her plan. On every hour, a minute is recorded to match this time. Cage prepares the piano, it is never wasted, Cage is laugh would wake the dead. Complex can be cursory, intricate palm leaf offerings, but especially it is signal, signal, restless and where, restless and what. Pieces of an hour in which a small bolt was living, suspended web of significance demand explication. In motion to stay curious, what to be seated and happy. The night was half a star, half a moon, half over. Did you enter in? Someone, someone said about the star, it was sort of impossible to get in so far as that impossible. And you are such and such of taxes, such and such. Three things go on, and can you guess what they are? Sustain the axis. What say? What am I argument? 
Cage's laugh would wake the dead. Cage's laugh would wake the dead. I said it was meeting you to do lunch. Do lunch. If we could do ever anything, do lunch. Dear, dear, John Cage, you better not focus on any one government to be a damage all a place over of itself and wander thrust around about a similar mantra, mantra revelation. It was a setup. You set yourself up. Pieces of an hour. You were the proxy. You were the convent. You said your matins reversing to even song. Dear John, caged. Om, hein, gring, kling, chamanda, ye, vajaya. How many elves or leaves? She is under the piano now. Hits the hard black underbelly now. Who is a man not caged? Who is a woman not worth? Who is a man not caged? Who is a woman not worth? Dear John Cage, the world is a more hum, hum, humming place. We thank you for it. And I wanted to read a little bit from the sort of poem sequence, Marriage, a Sentence. And this is the, uh, I think I, I, we were working on Hyben in, my, uh, in a workshop at Naropa and uh, talking about the, the prose poem and the, um, then this sort of bit at the end that leads to possibly the, the more condensed haiku. And so I started with this uh, doubling this is called stereo for marriage and sentence. And then all my students said, you have to keep going. So that led to this 100-page um, adventure. But what happened was a kind of dialogue or duet between the prose sections and these tighter, shorter poems, poem sections. So it was a, a kind of exploded uh, version of the haibun and the, the kind of um, cap, you know, the cap haiku. It's called capping at the end of the, the haibun. Okay, so this is stereo. Marriage, marriage is like you say everything, everything in stereo, stereo, fall, fall on the bed, bed at dawn, dawn, because you work, work all night. Night is an apartment meant to be marriage. Marriage is an apartment and meant people, people come in, in, because when, when you marry, marry, chances are there will be edibles, edibles to eat at tables, tables in the house. House will be the apartment, which is night, night. There will be a bed, bed, and an extra bed, bed, a clean, Clean sheet, sheet, or two, two for guess, guess, one extra towel, extra towel. How will you be welcomed? There will be drinks, drinks galore, galore, brought by armies, armies of guests, guests, cast, casts of liquors, liquors, and brandies, brandies, elixirs, sweet, sweet, and bitter, bitter bottle of Merlot, Merlot, Bustello, coffee. Will you have some when I offer? When you were married, married, there will be handsome gifts, gifts for the kitchen, kitchen, sometimes two, two of everything. Everything is brand, brand, new, new espresso coffee cups, a finished plate, a clock, a doormat, pieces of art, and books of astonishing medical science with pictures, even richer lexicons. When you were married, married, there will be more, more sheets, sheets, and towels, towels arriving, arriving, and off, and off, and a pet, pet, or two, two. You definitely need a telephone and a cell phone when you are married, married. Two, 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 two lines, 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 lines. You need, need separate, separate electronic mail, electronic mail accounts, accounts. When you were married, married, you will have sets, sets of things, things of more sheets and towels matching. You will have duplicates of things. You will have just one tablecloth. When you were married, married, you will be responsible when neighbors, neighbors greet you, greet you. You will smile, smile in unison, unison. You might say, oh, he is fine. Oh, she is fine. Oh, she is down. 
down with a cold. Oh, he is consoling a weary traveler from now, arrived from across the plains. She, my husband, is due home soon. He, my wife, is busy at the moment. My husband, she is very, very busy, busy at this moment, this moment. Very moment meant goodbye, goodbye. When you were married, married, sex, sex will happen, happen without delay, delay. You will have a mailbox, mailbox, and a doorbell, doorbell, bell, bell, ring, ring, it rings, rings again a double time. You do not have to answer, that's sure, for when, when you are married, marry people, people understand, understand. You do not, not have to answer, answer a doorbell, doorbell, because sex, sex may happen, happen without delay, delay. You will hear everything twice through your ears and the ears of the other, her or him, as a case, case may be, be, he and he and she and she is a case, case may be, be. When you are married, married, you can play, play with names, names and rename yourself if you like. You can add a name, have a double name with a hyphen if you like. You can open joint accounts when you are married, married. Marriage is no guarantee against depression. A shun is no guarantee against anything. Marriage is no guarantee against resolution, revolution is a tricky word, word, hear, hear you, hear, hear, marriage, marriage is sweeter, sweeter than you think, think. <laughs> and I'll read this for Gina, where are you? Gina. This is called Jack Kerouac Dream. He's talking speedily about the evil of the feminine, but he likes it. Oh, bitter tones of the demon feminine. He's in a repressed New England winter room, but oddly, it's like the old whorehouse in Eldora with bats inside the walls. There's peeling wallpaper of gold fleur de lis patterns on green on the far side, and his coat of arms, or rather his mother's arm coat, armchair is close by. It looks like a shrunken deer's head, size of a rabbit's foot, with French letters crudely scrawled on a wooden plaque beneath. A peur, a peur translates is fear, but cognate to or sounds like espoir, hope. He's shivering in an old camel's hair coat, smoking Chesterfields, old golds in front of a raging fire. He's wanting to hunt and gather, hunt and gather, he says, but it's too cold. Where can we go to forage now that all the skies are broken? I am thinking, if only I were born earlier, I could love him, take care of him. Close to his face now, I see his raging corpuscles in the dancing firelight, intricate aborigine designs tattooed on a remarkably pristine visage. It's a drift, flesh and bone, mortification, deadpan, life's a raked field, he mumbles. I'm part of a Buddhist plot to get him to be reborn, to liberate all sentient beings. I'm inviting him to give a reading at the Academy of the Meticulous Future. But what may I offer? I tried calling. Your phone was dead was why I came. Mm, mm, he's off somewhere else now, his eyes moist and glassy. Jack Kerouac. Patriot Act, patriarch, patriarchal, paternalism, paterfamilias, patronomic, patronizing, paternity, pathology, pathological, pathetic, pathogenic, patrocentric, patrilinear, patrimonial, patrist, Padrone, patronage, patriot, matriot, yes, matriarchal, yes, matriarchy, yes, matrilineal, yes, patriotism, matris, yes, matriot acts, matriot acts, matriot acts, matriot acts. I just had to do that, I'm sorry. I was interviewed by.
interviewed by a wonderful feminist presence here for you. This is a recent piece called Problem Not Solving. Hopefully that's going to change. And this actually came from a trip to the, uh, the, uh, Vecchio, the Ghetto Vecchio in uh, Venice, which was this walled off, walled off period for many centuries. So, problem not solving. Old way back or Palestine, what of its rip and tears, its tears and weeping, its ghetto? I mark this for you, I sound this for you, tears and weeping of ghetto, of Gaza, problem not solving. Why, why, problem not solving, and of Zion? in metal of poem time, in scripture of 21st century time, New Year 2009 time. Why, why problem not solving long range rocket revenge toward Ashkelon? How many dead, not so many dead in Ashkelon, but any death too many of death and woundings too many. Remember Ashkelon kilometers 10 north of Gaza. Remember Gaza, life ripped apart in Gaza, problem not Solving, fine elliptical gallery for women only. Sit here, mothers and sisters, sisters and children in your problem, not solving. Describe the body parts you sifted from the trees, from the scattered trees of Zion, of Gaza, dry dust of trees, the trees now decimated, trees now in Gaza, three wells of Zion, scattered trees of Zion. What of the trees of Zion? Three ways to undream the nightmare, the dear dead body parts. Enter the dream, the nightmare of ghetto, of Gaza, and the end of ghetto, and say three times, I will not do to them what has been done to me. I will not do to them what has been done to me. I will not do to them what has been done to me. To me. A side hit Sedra with grad rockets from Iran. Side, what side, what side, inside, what a side, inside. Problem not solving, problem not solving. Time to make peace with Syria, that side. Old Ur vision of unsolved Israel, unsolved Palestine, and building up more arsenals with arms of arms. Reach out, human and fleshly. I will lament here. I will lament here and reach out, arms, human and fleshly. Problem not solving, not solving. Reach out, arms to ghetto, to Gaza. I don't know if I can try this machine. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, so these are a few pieces from the uh, Matching Half CD, and they're all part of the ongoing um, EOVIS project, which is um, an epic now, 25 years in the making, that uh, started out as a, a meditation on patriarchy and war and um, sort of covering my, some of my father's experience in World War II. There's a section called Vietnam, or Nam, a history lesson for my son. Then I was able to travel to Vietnam in, the, in 2000. And, um, so there, there are resonances within this uh, book that, that travels over a, a lot of time. So this, not sure where this little part lies, but uh, my son Ambrose Bai, who's a musician and composer, made some of these selections. And so they're, they're uh, extracted from, again, this epic poem which tells the story of our tribe, our tribes, whatever that is. So we'll see if this works here. This is called To Show My Face. Why am I daring to show my face? Why am I daring to show my face? 
Friends. It was the day before the movie rehearsal and shoot, the day before the funeral, the day before the self-immolating attack, when incendiary meant simply hot and you could say it about a lover if you were so inclined, the day before the disc attack folded, it was bombed in Bali, the day before so many suffered, and you could make something North American about it, including all the continents that would keep a Polaris missile out of their midst. And then it came all back to you opposite me. It all came back, 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 back opposite me, leaning over your instrument of power. And that instrument would record an inquisitive face. Why? Am I daring to show my face? Why am I daring to show my face? Not Cleopatra's face, not Emperor Hirohito's face, not an Agrippa at the control, not the face of a tyrant or a super errant knight. And you might ask about threads and stitches, and you might inquire about buttons and harnesses, about exigencies of destroying proof, about all the colors matching. Why am I daring to show my face? Why am I daring to show my face? Out of the time warp and onto the street where you stood waiting for the shutter to snap, shouting, hold, hold, hold. And then it was your face that was always needed, your face which was always with me, and it could hold anything it wanted to, your face, an unforced perspective, lunar calendar, a way of thinking, behaving as spectator to the spectacle. Why, why? Why, 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 why am I daring to show my face? Why am I daring to show my face? Does that sort of work? Should I, should I try a few more of these? Does that sort of work or should I just go back to? Okay. Okay. We'll do the, the manatee. Okay, so this, this piece is a litany of a much longer poem. Again, um, Ambrose is very good at extracting things that seem to be almost, um, you know, musical moments. And this is a narrative piece that it's just about to come out. I have a copy here somewhere. It's called Manatee Humanity. And it's about, it's sort of an interspecies meditation. It takes a, a Buddhist ritual called the Kala Chakra ritual, which involves a three day, uh, three day ceremony. And so the poem takes place over three days. Uh, in this particular ceremony, you're instructed um, with a piece of kusha grass. You're given a piece of kusha grass and you put it, you put it under your pillow a uh, long one under your mattress and a short one under your pillow and you observe your dreams. So these, the dreams that in the longer uh, poem came out of this kind of practice. And then there's a kind of meditation on evolution and how we moved um, to our, you know, having a larynx which could sound and sing and man, man with his boats and plastic and attitude. The manatee often drowns in canal locks of man, man who makes no concession to manatee. The manatee often dies in flood control structures, 
Man who makes no concession to manatee, nor cares of manatee life, manatee fortune. The manatee dies in collision with watercraft. Man who does not protect the manatee. What steward of the earth is this unnatural man? Man who makes no concession to manatee. The manatee dies with the ingestion of fish hooks. Man who unnaturally makes no concession. The manatee dies from litter and monofilament lines. Man who is rank in attitude and has no use for manatee. The manatee dies entrapped in crab trap lines. The manatee dies from loss of habitat claimed by man. The manatee is maimed by man. The manatee could be aided by man. Man, oh aid the manatee. Come to the manatee heart. A manatee calf is born every two to five years. A manatee gestates for a year in the manatee womb. 8,400 miles of tidal waters could be for the manatee. 11,000 miles of rivers and stream could be for the manatee. 10,000 miles of canals would they all be for the manatee. The manatee has more gray matter in the brain than man. The manatee is perhaps thinking archivally deeper than man. Ancient days of manatee. So many thousands of years. Manatee mind. What is the mind of manatee? The manatee has no natural enemies. The manatee is completely herbivorous. The metabolism of the manatee is slow, moves slowly. The manatee moves in estuaries, moves in saltwater bays. The manatee moves in slow moving rivers. The manatee is gentle. The manatee offspring nurses for up to two years. The manatee learns everything from the manatee mother. The manatee mothers and offspring sing to one another. The manatee have large ear bones, chirps, whistles, squeaks of the manatee. The manatee in moving slowly moves gently. Oscillations of the manatee moving between the manatee ears, ears of the manatee mother and manatee offspring. Manatee are our sirenians and live in the house of the sirens. Where are the human sanctuaries for the manatee? Manatees, mermaids, sirens singing move slowly. The manatee mother and calf so bonded, female manatee bonded with her just one manatee offspring. The manatee is found in shallow, slow moving rivers. The manatee moves in estuaries, moves in saltwater bays. And I, you have a few more minutes? Okay, I'll end with um, one little piece and this other section from um, a piece called, um, well, it's a whole book. I seem not to be able to write little poems anymore. But anyway, it's from a text called Structure of the World Compared to a Bubble. And it uh, comes out of a trip to the Barobador Stupa in Java, which sits on the beautiful Kedu Plain. Uh, it's a miraculous uh, uh, stupa, Buddhist stupa, with a very kind of troubled history. Uh, it was, you know, came from, a stupa is a kind of um, burial terminus. But this particular stupa is a kind of uh, map or mandala of the, what's called the Mahayana path, which is the sort of middle path, uh, the bodhisattva path in, in Buddhism. So you, as you circumambulate, uh, you're reading these uh, wonderful pictures of telling, you know, they're sutras and they're telling the past lives of the Buddha and you ascend to the top, uh, which becomes more, it's a little like the, um, you know, getting to Paradiso in Dante's climb. It gets more abstract and more, you know, no, no images really, and there are these, there's an empty Buddha cage at the top. But so I tried to have this poem be an investigation into the sort of um, philosophy 
of the Mahayana. And at one point, I'm sort of exploring what's called the six realms. And so you have the, uh, the hell realms, then you move into the, what's called the uh, hungry ghost realms, the animal realm, the human realm, and then you move into the god realms, the warring god realm and the blissed out god realm. And in this sort of map, the, it's the human realm where's, where there's most possibility for communication. So in, within the poem, each of, I, there are these uh, prose sections that are each taking on the state of mind of the different realms. So this was the warring god realm state of mind. And I hope, hope we're not getting into more war. <laughs> I just can't do that. Um, but something to, you know, to, to be said about the warring god realm, it's a kind of uh, mentality where there's always an enemy. You almost have to, you have to create an enemy to, to, um, to have something to do with your you know, mind. And it's a very interesting, it's sort of Pentagon mentality, you know, the, this kind of always second guessing and being able to respond to the, um, the attack of what's coming from outside. So it's a very paranoid realm. So anyway, this piece tries to capture some of that. And it also, the vocabulary is from uh, actual terminology for these weapons in space, this plan for weapons in space, which I, we're hoping not, is not going to happen. But this has been very uh, conceptualized, the whole idea of weapons in space. So when I say, you know, cosmos positioning machine, uh, NAT robot threat detector, this is actually, I mean, it sounds like a cartoon, but maybe some of you know some of this language. So I'm trying to embody the uh, strangeness of the language. War in God realm. See back of all the hidden corners, everyone is me, my own, the enemy. Everyone is, oh, you ministers and robber barons of death. Everyone is, oh, you traffickers and body parts and banknotes of death. Everyone is looking at you from behind your back, the agent provocateurs of desire behind your back, backing you up. I say I have eyes in the back of my head. I say I have probing eyes to take you out. I say, cosmos, positioning machines to monitor every mood swing. I say, thermal imaging devices, to spot you six miles away at any time of the day or night. You better come out of your cave, your nook, your cranny, your cracked dope den, your crevasse, your secret planet, or stop hiding your missiles behind the moon and take the heat. I say all this, plot a moment, maintain this dangerous a moment. Language is a game, a distress, a war. Language is a quill in hand performance. All the particles of desire in language could make you name the weapons in space, relative or absolute space. All corners are suspicious and distressed in my distressing language of dominance and oblivion. Where is foreplay? I say this in my destructo swarmbot voice, in my robo bug voice, I say, don't mess with me in my nat robot threat detector voice. Don't play games with me who sees all the hidden corners out of all my robo bug eyes, all the suspicious preemptive moves. I am extremely efficient with my proud destructo swarm bot jaw, with proud face to show you accuracy in every cranial blow I administer. I say, I sing, I am resolute in moil and toil in occupational progress on the ground. I say I sing in my Ming Mong Kabao song. I say I'll sing a patriotic cannibal song, a transformative get down and grovel deportation song. I sing of warfighter, of orbital imaging and surveillance of arms and no man, of arms in space and no man left behind and no man in space where we can launch our kinetic energy rods, our oxygen suckers, our happy suppression clouds, our big deal cluster satellites, our holographic decoys, our sexy microwave guns, when we will launch our 360 degree sword mounted displays, our pyrotechnic electromagnetic pulses, our searing flechettes, space, space. Oh, I sing of space, the injured Dharmakaya space, the sweet relative space. Everything capitalized and romanticized in German noun space, in American empire space, and in the ultimate high ground space, the tower from which to pour boiling oil. I say global battleship dominance. I say full spectrum dominance and pour more boiling oil. We must, O oh earthlings, have the ability to control the high ground of space with our hyperspectral subtle light signature observation device. 
which distinguishes a field of oats from a field of barley and tells you the specific species of oats and whether the field contains, is it natural or genetically altered oats, and whether the field is infested with insects or damaged by nitrogen depletion and tanks under trees. I sing thus in my holographic battleship, deception voice of tanks under trees. I sing, I sing of what will be no space left behind. And we'll be able with our robo bug eyes in all the corners of our body, we'll be, able, we'll be able to discern the unique light signatures of extremely specific things, like tanks resting under trees covered in camouflage, or tanks painted with a paint made to make them not look like tanks under trees. So, if the bad guys are hiding tanks under trees, and you have a good idea of what the bad guy's tank is like, and you know what the local trees look like, you can screen out the tree's wavelength and just see the tank signature. Then you'll know if there's something bad under that tree and you can bank in spectral light ray scary library and oats of infinite space and time and barley time. I say, I sing, we're just putting another arrow in our quiver and you can spend your days imagining how and enemy might exploit space because it is our manifest destiny to exploit space and it is a dangerous world out there. Okay, and I'm gonna... So I'm just gonna end with a few verses from Verses for the New Amazing Grace. The grace of all the bards who pen their words to transport me. Sweet vows and consonants strengthen goddess poetry's legacy. Heart pearls roll off the poet's tongues who chant in praise of love. Troubadours blessed with hearty lungs, esoterics zapped from above. Oh, Sappho's bite and Shakespeare's wit and Dante's mystical crime, Dickinson's rhyme, bearded Whitman's breath are etched in genetic spine. And if the planet cease to spin, sad universe go silent. Dark, ancient poetry's echoes will make a din, rekindle the primordial spark. Oh, I bow down to Christ's thorny crown, all sacraments meant to heal. The Buddha smiled, old Yahweh's frown, and Allah's consummate zeal, but Poetry's a goddess sent to save a wretch like me. She strums the strings of life's desperate edge with her haunting, haunting, haunting meh, Thank you.